Well, welcome everyone. This is Dave DeBow with another episode of the Property Profits Real Estate Podcast. And today it is my pleasure to introduce you to Ellie Perlman. And Ellie is a very, very accomplished real estate entrepreneur who focuses on well, quite large multifamily properties, 100 plus units in the States, primarily focusing on buildings in Texas and, and Georgia and Florida. And Ellie's originally from Israel and moved to the United States and really started as a real estate lawyer and then got into investing herself. I believe it was in, was it 2007 that she started, Ellie? Uh, yeah, well, 2007 was the year that, um, I don't know if fortunately or unfortunately, uh, I, I wasn't in investing mode back then. I was um, representing other investors and other real estate companies as their lawyer, as part of the, their legal team. So I got to experience, um, you know, the the financial ruins of some of the deals and, and learned, I think from that experience, that made me very, very um, cautious when it comes to investing in real estate um, and kind of shape the way that I, um, that I look at a deal um, and maybe made me very conservative. But yeah, that, that's the year where I started my first steps in real estate. And that's the year everything kind of crashed in the United yeah. States with the real estate market, right? Which yeah. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. Exactly. So my clients did pretty well. They were pretty established, you know, firms um, in Israel, one of the largest um, developers in Israel. So they were fine, but we had some rough times. Definitely, I would imagine. So how did you kind of make that leap to go from being legal representation to becoming an investor yourself? What, what really sparked that for you? Um, well, when I was sitting across the table and negotiating with banks and uh, drafting contracts, I kind of felt that I was on the wrong side of the table. I wanted to be my clients. I wanted to be there looking for projects, evaluating deals. And, um, and it took me many years to do that because you go from a, a very comfortable place to start something completely new. So it took me a few years to get there. Um, but that's, that's basically where it all started. But it must have been fascinating because there you are, you're working for a big developer, you're, you're in the legal side of things, but your context right off the get-go would have been so much bigger than everybody else's who's getting into real estate investing because you're, you're used to seeing these big, big numbers, you're used to seeing these big projects. I think that would have been a, a massive advantage for getting started, but my question would be, so when you decided to make the leap and start investing yourself, uh, when it comes to the, the financing and the, and the capital required for your deals, how did you get the ball rolling with that? So um, my start was actually, and that's the advice that I give everyone who is asking me, you know, Ellie, I really want to start. What should I do next? Um, I actually partnered with someone that was much more experienced than me. Um, and and I do two things. One, I vetted sponsors until I got to the right person that I wanted to partner with. And that was good because when you do your first deal, basically, um, you know, investors like some, some of them know you and like you already, but you still have the lack of experience that you can't, you can't buy it anywhere, but you can borrow it. So when you partner with someone ex more experienced then. It, it helps bringing capital to the deal. It, help, it helps um, investors say, okay, you know what? We know you, we trust you, we trust your judgment when it comes to who you partner with. And because you might not have, you have experience in real estate, but maybe not in you know, investing, well, you're partnering with someone who does, and that definitely helps. And then the, the, the second part of it was I didn't wait until I had a deal with my partner to actually start raising money. I started very early on before I had any deal on the table. And that was helpful because, so the way I did it, uh, it was helpful because it was actually shortened the, the, the time that it, it would have taken me to actually raise money when the deal was relevant, was on the table. And the way that I did it is basically I made a list of all the people that I knew that I thought that would either, could either um, have money to invest in real estate or already investing in real estate. And I reached out to them and I said, hey, this is what I do now. This is 
you know, how I'm, you know, th this is how I look at a market and these are the deals that I'm looking at. And it basically helped because some of a very small percentage was not interested in real estate at all. So I knew not to quote unquote, waste my time when I actually had a deal. So I was targeting ex exact people that are interested in real estate. And in addition, some of them didn't really know what syndication is, especially people that are from, you know, outside that are not from the U S. So, um, foreign investors don't always know what syndication is. And when you talk with them about investing in real estate in the U S they immediately think about single family homes in buying large multifamily properties, even 40 units, um, is something that is really hard for them to digest. So you, you, you kind of explain to them what a syndication is. And then from there, basically the, the last part was, Hey, now that I know that you're interested in real estate, I know that you have the money to invest and you know what a syndication is. Once I have a deal that is similar to, you know, a sample deal that I showed them, would you be interested in investing? And 10 out of 10 times they said, yes. Nice. So, so by the time I had a deal, I went back to them and it was a lot faster because they already knew that I was doing this. They already knew what a syndication was. So they, their only focus right now was, do I like that specific deal? And am I liquid at this point? Very, very smart. So Ellie, for I think a lot of our listeners probably have experience with single family homes, but not necessarily with large multifamily properties. So how, when you had to explain what a syndication was to your prospective investors, let's pretend I'm one of them and explain what a syndication is to me, because a lot of people don't know what it, they've heard of it, but they don't really know what it is. Sure. So um, syndication in the most, you know, basic and simple, you know, way is um, it's, it's a group investment where investors are, can be truly passive investors. So as a syndicator, as someone who organizes the group, what I do is that I find the deals, I negotiate with the seller, I sign on the loan, um, and I manage the asset. And the only job that the investors or the passive investors um, need to do is basically look at the deal, understand, make a decision if they want to invest, and then write a check. Could be 50000 could be half a million dollars. But this is where basically their job ends because they don't need, they're not signing on a mortgage and they're not, they don't need to manage the asset. We do all of that. And in returns, we are being compensated in two ways. One way is fees. And then the other is an equity split, which means that part of the income of the property goes to us for doing all the work. Um, the front end, the back end, while we're holding, you know, the property. And, and usually in a syndication, it's, um, the hold period, so the, the time that we actually hold on to the property before we sell it is um, anywhere between five and seven years. Very, very cool. And so are you typically working with just um, accredited investors or can it be pretty much anybody that you, that you know that can be part of this syndication? Well, that's a really uh, great question. It's a question that we keep asking ourselves, should we open it only for accredited investors or also for sophisticated investors? Um, so for those, for the listeners who don't know what a accredited investor is, is someone who either has a net worth of a million dollars, um, not including the home that they live in, and, um, or someone who has, who's been making $200,000 a year or $300,000 if, if, um, uh, if, the, the, the investor is exactly married. Mm -hmm. And so um, in some, some of the investments, we open to sophisticated investors, which are both accredited and non-accredited, but they have to have some sort of even basic understanding about real estate investing. And um, we might open it only for accredited investors moving forward. But right now we're open for both. Makes sense. So I'm not sure how it works in the States because uh, I'm in Canada. A lot of our listeners are in mm -hmm. Canadian as well. But when it comes to creating a, a syndication, are there, is there certain paperwork that you have to go through with the securities bodies or, or how does that work? Well, that's a great question. Um, and to be fully transparent, until today, we've only worked with investors from the U.S. Um, and the reason is that there's an additional kind of 
um, steps we need to take when we work with um, investors that are out of state. Mm -hmm. And so um, one of it is basically, um, and again, I might be totally wrong there. So I don't want to pretend that I know, you know, the right answer for this because I might not know it. But to my understanding, we need to withhold about 20% of the profit um, just to make sure because the IRS wants to make sure that investors that are not, you know, in in the U.S. that don't mm -hmm. live here will actually pay taxes. So right. um, this is something that we're working on. And until today, we've only, again, uh, we were only open to investors um, from the U.S. But um, starting next month, we're actually going to open it to more investors. So we're in the process um, of learning that. Um, I would say, however, that LLC might not be the right um, way to do it if you're in Canada. And that's based on, you know, the research that I've done recently. But I really think that before anyone invests um, in a syndication in the U.S., they probably should, you know, speak to a lawyer and a CPA to understand what is the best way to do it. Structure. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, Ellie, um, sounds like you've got quite a bit of experience under your belt. Like this so how many how many syndications have you done over the last few years, for example? Do you keep track? Uh, yeah, I do keep track. So um, we have, so I started investing, uh, you know, passively. Uh, and so my husband and I own, uh, I mean, in total, we own about 2,000 units and some of it is passively, some of it is actively. Um, we have about close to 650 units um, under management. Um, and when I say we, I mean Blue Lake Capital, the company um, that I manage. My husband is a strictly a passive investor. That's uh, real estate, unfortunately, is not his passion. He's in the uh, a water technology business, so he runs his own company. Right. Um, and then, um, and we're on track to actually acquire about 1,000 units this year. Wow, that's very, very impressive. So, um, if you were starting all over again, what, if anything, would you do differently? Because it sounds like you did a lot of things right, right from the get go. Is there anything that you would do a little bit differently if you're doing it over again? Um, things I would do differently. I usually don't think in those terms, um, of looking back. Well, let's, let's look, let's look at it a different way then. So let's say yeah. somebody's interested in doing what you do. Mm -hmm. How could they get started on the right foot? I would say either um, partner with someone more experienced or find a mentor and learn from them because there's so much you don't know. Um, and it actually took me uh, longer than I thought when I started. It took me longer to actually get the first deal because I thought, okay, I'm going to look into deals, run numbers and figure out, uh, you know, and I'll find a deal. And it took a lot longer than I thought. So I think, you know, partnering earlier would have been better for me because it would have probably, you know, it would have expedited the, the process for me. Um, so I, I would say one of those two or even both. Yeah. yeah. Very good advice. Very good advice. So are you, do you work with people who are interested in getting into these kind of, I mean, obviously you do as you work with people who want to invest with you, mm -hmm. but do you work with other people who are interested in finding out how to do what you do? Yeah, so um, I do work with people who want to get into syndication in, in two main ways. Um, well, one is, is kind of in, in the works, um, but the, the, the first, um, you know, way would be to partner with people who um, can bring something to the table. So it could either be someone who has an off-market deal that fits our criteria, um, and then it could also be someone who can help with, um, you know, maintaining relationships with investors um, on the capital side. So, and we, of course, don't, you know, partner with just anybody. It's kind of more of a relationship that are being, have been built over the years. Um, and then the other part of, um, of working with people who want to get into syndication is a mentoring program that is actually not ready yet. Uh, still working on it, but this is something that is in the works because um, 
I found out that I, I spent a lot of time talking with people that want to get into syndication and, sh you know, share my experience with them. And um, I thought, you know what, if I'm, if I spend all those hours every, every week, why don't I just put it on paper and make it official and make it, you know, easier for people to follow. Um, Cause it's, it's, it's kind of nice to conceptually explain to people how to raise money um, the things you need to be aware of when you underwrite a deal, but it's different when you actually teach them the basics from A to Z. Um, and so, and I know that some people are trying to save money by taking out some syndicators for coffee or a phone call. You can get free, you know, advice and it's all going to be good, but it's never going to be enough mm -hmm. to help you, you know, run a syndication business from A to Z. And, this is basically the program that I'm working on. Um, so I went to MIT. I got my MBA degree several years ago. And this is part of my education and my experience I actually embedded in this program. So it's not only going to teach people how to raise money or how to underwrite deals or how to manage the asset, but also how do you build a sustainable, scalable syndication business? Because it's, it's a business before it's a real estate investment or a real estate company. So. Yeah. That's what I'm working on these days. Well, this, this, it might be a little while before this uh, interview comes out. So you might have it ready by that time. So if yeah. people are interested in finding out more about you, how can they find out about uh, Ellie Perlman? So you can just Google Ellie Perlman. Um, it's E-L-L-I-E. -L -L -E, and uh, Perlman is P-E-R-L-M-A-N. Um, you can just go to my website, ellieperlman.com. And you'll see all the information. There's also free education for passive and investors and for syndicators. Um, they can read my blog there. Uh, they can reach out to me, um, you know, and read about my program. And everything is basically there. Perfect. Ellie, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure chatting with you and meeting you online. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Well, thanks very much for checking out the Property Profits podcast. If you like what we're doing here, please head on over to iTunes, subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. We very, very much appreciate it. And if you're looking to create a regular flow of inbound investor inquiries about your real estate deals, then I invite you to attend one of my upcoming live online demonstrations. And you can check that out at Investor Attraction Demo dot com. Take care.